and one was in service of the other. My first announcement was that I wanted to, wanted to start a marching band here at SJV. And my second was a joke that I told wrong because I got nervous speaking in front of the seminary. But now I get to tell it right. How does an Irish potato change its nationality when it becomes French fried? <laughs> we have heard about the many aspects and sayings of my priest hero, such as, I don't need you, or when he told a thousand high school students, you are not special, or how he is over six feet tall with a huge arms and a cleric personality. But today... I hope to demonstrate another side of him, to share with you how I have been truly fathered by my priest hero, Father Brian Dorr. Father Dorr and I met when I was a sophomore in public high school, when he founded a chapter of the Knights of the Holy Temple at my parish. He invited me to join the order, and if it was not for the constant encouragement of Michael Bauer, I would not have joined the Knights. If it was not for my relationship with my spiritual father, Father Dorr, I would not be standing before you as a seminarian. Father Dorr has helped to establish me as a Catholic man. He has done this through the many expressions of his fatherly love for me. When I was discerning at the end of high school, he helped me to decide to go to Purdue because I was not feeling called to enter right out of high school. It was at Purdue that I really began to grow close to him. We started a men's group at the Newman Center, which allowed us to see each other once a week and meet personally two to three times a month to talk about our group. But looking back on those meetings, it was more to see how I was doing and to encourage me in my discernment because I chose not to date for the year to more properly discern God's will for my life. It was during this year at Purdue when I began to see that Father Dorr had an immense confidence in me. He trusted what I had to say and valued it very highly. This helped me to trust him to be more open and grow in confidence in myself through his trust in me. It was not until a breakfast on Friday morning in March where he gave me a real kick to enter the seminary. I remember him saying directly, Christian, I think you should go to seminary. It caught me off guard because I didn't want to make a decision, but I knew he was right. It was then that I made my decision to come to seminary. It was his fatherly wisdom that helped me to get off the fence and to choose to enter the seminary, who helped me to become a man with a chest. During my time here at SJV, I have learned a lot about my strengths and weaknesses, and Father Brian has been there through them all with me. When I would call him, he would often be busy, but I was always a top priority, and he would call me back whenever he had a few minutes even though it was often inconvenient for him. He was always there for me, and I knew I could always call upon him. When we would talk during the school year at seminary, it was usually when things weren't going so well. One example of this is my struggle with self-confidence in comparison with the other men here. Father Dorr has this special gift, where in just a few questions, he's able to get me to open my heart, explain everything, and it often brought me to tears. I told him all of my struggles. I told him everything that was going on. I feel like I'm the only one struggling with comparison. I feel like I'm a fake, just going through the motions. My prayer has been dry for so long. Father, I am longing to know God's love in the depths of my heart. If we were talking in person, this would be where we would set down our cigars and stop walking. He would look me in the eye and say, Christian, You are good. You are a great man, and I love you. You have what it takes. You are a man with a chest. Then he would wrap his huge huge arms around me where I often felt like I was going to be crushed. There was one night when I was on the farm last summer where we were walking on the dirt country roads under the stars. I was sharing some of my struggles from the farm, still not believing that I am good, and that I have what it takes. And as a good father, he never gave up on me. He told me again and again, that night as well as all times previous, that he cares about me. He affirmed my goodness, 
and that I don't need to be anyone else. I just have to be me. Christian Michael Stephen DiCarlo. I don't need to be someone I'm not. I don't need to pretend to be a really extroverted, choleric, sanguine man, but I need to be the introverted, melancholic that God created me to be. For it is only when I am who God created me to be that I am most free to discern his will for my life, allowing him to work through me that I am truly happy. During the times when I've had questions about my vocation, he would tell me that he would not have accepted me if he didn't think that I'd make a damn good priest. All of these affirmations and encouragements that Father Dor gave me, I took to the Lord to question them, to search them, to plumb their depths to see if they were true. My brothers, they are true. Jesus Christ said all of those things to me through Father Dor. Jesus says all of these things to each one of you as well. It was only through Father Dor's constant repetition of those truths that they finally began to sink in, that I started to let down my walls around my heart, to let God enter, to find peace in being a seminarian, to have confidence in my identity as God's son, and confident in my vocation to the priesthood. He has always encouraged me to become a better man, not to settle for being mediocre, but to strive for greatness because I have the capacity from our Lord to be better, to become a saint. My brothers, we all have this capacity for greatness. C.S. Lewis exhorts us to be men with chests, not as some macho man, but as the Son of God called to greatness. By, encourage, by encountering our identity in Christ Jesus, bestowed upon us by God the Father, we are able to become the men we were created to be. We will then be able to become the priests that we are called to be. Our team Vianney guests, I exhort you to be a man with a chest, to more earnestly discern your call to the holy priesthood, to put your trust in the Lord, surrendering everything to him, to strive to be the man that God called you to be. My brothers, don't settle for mediocrity. Strive to be great men. Strive to grow in virtue these next few weeks. Do not sit idly by and let this precious time at St. John Vianney College Seminary pass you by. My brothers, be magnanimous men. Be men with chests. Praise be Jesus Christ.